Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 14 of my code refactoring tutorial. Today, I'm going to show you how and when to use the adapter pattern. And for all of you guys out there that are asking for an algorithm and data structure video, I am going to make those together with my code refactoring tutorials to try to mix it up a bit. But either way, let's just jump right into the code. Okay, for this tutorial, I'm actually using some code. It was a question that one of you guys sent me a couple weeks back, and this is code that came from the creation of a video game. The only thing I did here was I swapped out actual actions and graphics and all that stuff out of here for just a simple printout of what was going on to keep this tutorial a little bit less complicated. So either way, one of you guys sent me one of these things, and what it was was an Asteroids type game. However, you wanted to use multiple different types of enemy ships. And this code was not working for you, so you asked me to improve it. Well, the adapter pattern is going to do that for you. In this example code, as you see here, new enemy ships are created, first off, using conditionals. And if you think to yourself, well, I would never do that, just stick with it here, because later on, this person adds additional functionality that is very, very common. So basically, the way everything was structured was different enemy ships would be used Used as levels increased in the game. And then we would assign different names as well as attack power and spaces that the ships moved as well as graphics and so forth and so on. Well, after a while, this became a little bit tedious for the person and they wanted to add a completely different type of ship, one that warps around the screen. And you can see here what they decided to do then was add a subclass of enemy ship and then change completely completely the way that this enemy ship moved. And then they also planned on creating additional subclasses as they needed additional ships. Well, what I'm going to show you here next is how with the adapter pattern, we're going to be able to create a new class without disturbing any of the code that is already here. And on top of that, adapters are going to make it easier for us to swap in code at runtime. And they're also going to allow us to communicate with code using method names that are going to make sense to us. So not only am I going to improve upon on the code that was sent here, I'm going to show you how to add flexibility to this code so that you could add a limitless number of different ships that do nearly anything, even if the method names don't match up. So I'm going to erase this code and we are going to create it anew. Okay, so with the adapter pattern, what I need to create first here is an interface the client is going to work with. And then it's going to be the adapter's job, which I'm going to create here in a couple minutes to make sure that new classes are compatible with this interface. So I'm just going to go interface enemy and define the different methods that I want to use. Now would be a good time to make sure that you could put in basically every single method you would ever want to use. But either way, I'm going to keep this simple. And at the same time, by limiting this interface, I'm going to be able to show you something else really cool you can do with an adapter. All right, so there's our basic interface for our enemy ships. Now. I'm actually going to come in here and create a class that is going to implement the enemy interface as we have here on the screen. And of course, it's going to say that I need to bring in different methods here, add on implemented methods. Okay, great. So there's the two methods that I want to use here. Now stick with me here for a second because I'm going to throw all kinds of wrenches in my own code and then fix it as I go on. Well, what this guy is going to do, basically, is it's going to have an attack power, just like the code that I previously showed you. And all the code that is here is available in a link under the video, and it's heavily commented, and it should help you learn this stuff a little bit better. And of course, it is free. Okay, so spaces move per turn, and we're just going to set this as two. So we're just going to get rid of those conditionals all together. Then on top of that, like I said before, I'm just going to print out exactly what's going on on the screen to keep this simple. So here I'm going to go Galax moves, which is the name of a ship. And then this is going to be spaces moved per turn. There we are. And there is spaces. And then I'm going to do the same thing down here with make ship attack. And then I'll show you what happens whenever we're not using these method names. Because remember I said that the adapter pattern is not going to force us to use the method names that are defined in the interface. 
And then here we'll just say Galax does and then put attack power damage. All right. So this is the obvious way to use this interface. Well, now we're going to bring the adapter into it. And the reason why is we are going to have what is called the adaptee. This is going to be a class that is not going to follow any of the rules for the interface. It's not even going to implement the interface. And what the adapter is going to do, which I'm going to create after this, guys, it's going to call the right methods here in Galax Prime when they are called in the enemy interface. So let's go call this Galax Prime. And I'm going to go protected string name is equal to Galaxian Prime. And then I'm going to go... This doesn't have to be attack power, by the way, just because I used it before, but I'm just using it. Checked it in. And this guy is supposed to warp around the screen, which means it disappears and then appears somewhere else. That's the reason why they decided they had to subclass it. Well, I say, why don't you just create a method with the name that you wanted to use, which was turn force field on. This guy also had a force field. And then have this method do exactly what you want it to do. So here we're going to go name plus turns on force field. And as you can see, I'm on purpose giving it completely different names because I know with the adapter, I'm going to be able to fix anything. I can use the method names I want to use. I'm not going to be tied to the interface. And then here, we're just going to go name of the ship, warps, spaces moved per turn, spaces. And I'm adding all kinds of things. Say up here, this is only two methods. I'm already up to two and I'm not following any of the rules. And I'm not going to follow any of the rules or create any of those because I'm not implementing the interface. And then there was supposed to be a pause charge phasers before it could fire. And here we're just going to go name charges phasers. And then after that, we're going to have it actually fire phasers. Name fires phasers four and then let's just put in attack power so this is the adaptee this is the oddball that we want to work just like any other enemy well to do that we're going to need an adapter and what it's going to do is provide completely different actions or methods as you saw right up here these method names are not the same as the interface for those methods that are defined in the interface. So how we create this adapter is we're going to go class, and I'm going to call this enemy adapter. If it's an adapter, I like to have adapter in its name, and it's going to be implements enemy. It is going to implement the enemy interface, and then it's going to, of course, have to add those unimplemented methods, and there they are. Now what the adapter is going to do is it's going to contain an object of type adaptee. So that is going to be this guy up here, Galax Prime. So it's going to contain Galax Prime inside of it. So Galax Prime, and then let's just call him Galax Prime. Then what it's going to do is all the calls that are going to be sent to these enemy methods for move ship and make ship attack, it's going to automatically send them instead to the proper methods in the Galax Prime class. So move ship, the way that's going to work, well, first off, we have to create a constructor for this. So let's just go in here, and I'm going to go source and do that. Constructor using fields. And Galax Prime is the only one that I have inside of here. And let's say that I want to put it after Galax Prime. So there it is. Now, for move ship, that I, since I have Galax Prime stored inside of there, I'm going to go turn on force field, which is going to happen before the ship starts to move. Call that method. And then I'm going to go warp to space. Remember, it disappears and then reappears. Boom. Done. So there, I just completely changed the way that it moves. And also, remember, it has to charge its lasers before it can fire. No problem. Just going to come in here to charge phasers. Charge phasers. Done. And then I'm also going to go and fire the lasers, which fire the phasers anyway. And there that is. That's done. So that's how you create an adapter. And now we can go in here and we can test this guy to make sure it's going to work for us. So I'm just going to go class test enemy adapter, create my main function. And now what I can do is I can define enemy galax 
just like normal. Just go new, Galax, which is like a weaker ship. And if I want to use my Galax Prime, what I need to do is go Galax Prime, Galax, I'm going to call this Galax Prime Adapt T because that's what it is. New Galax Prime. And then if I want to use Galax Prime as if it is an enemy, no problem. I'm going to go enemy, Galax Prime. This is actually using the adapter. And I'm going to use the adapter, enemy, adapter, like that. And then I'm just going to pass in Galax Prime, which is going to get saved inside of here. Let's go up here just to make sure you know. There's Galax Prime and there is enemy adapter. See, Galax Prime is going to be saved inside of there because here is where it's getting sent in for the constructor. And then I can test this. So let's see if Galax works in exactly the same way that my Galax Prime that has completely different methods. So I'm just going to go move ship just like before, like we did. No problem. And then we're going to come in here and we're going to go make ship attack. No problem. Just throw in a new line there just to separate these. And then with Galax Prime, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Click on that and click on move ship. Good, no problem. Galax Prime, make ship attack, no problem. Did it in exactly the same way. And then if we want to execute this guy, I'm just going to go over here with this guy and run as Java application. And there you can see. Galax moves two spaces. Galax does five damage. And here is Galaxian Prime, which works in a completely different way with completely different methods. And yet it's going to work with this interface just like everything else. So there is an example of how to use the adapter pattern. It's a great pattern. Please leave any questions or comments below. And like I said before, the next tutorial, we'll start getting into data structures and algorithms, but I'm not giving up on refactoring. Till next time.